exhibition titled A. Ramachandran, a selection of exhibits from his 50 years of art practice is curated by R. Siv Kumar. <laughs> Presents over 260 works of the artist done between 1968 and 2001, which includes mural size paintings, sculptural installations, and single piece works, etchings, watercolor, drawings, and illustrated books. It's an honor to have such a beautiful gathering here. I would like to invite our guests, Sri A. Ramachandran, Sri R. Siv Kumar, Sri Advaita Charat Karnayak, DZ NGMA, Sri Arun Vadhera, Sri Mati Anita Rupavtaram to come on stage and to formally inaugurate the show by lighting the lamp. Thank you. Sri A. Ramachandran by presenting a shawl, an NGMA publication, and a floral bouquet. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Director NGMA Mumbai to welcome and felicitate Sri Advaita Charan Garnayak, Director General NGMA, by presenting a flower bouquet. Sir, it's an honor for us to have you here. <laughs> Now, Director NGMA Mumbai will felicitate Sri Asif Kumar, eminent art historian, art critic, and curator of this exhibition with a floral bouquet. Sri JJ D'Souza, assistant director NGMA Mumbai, will felicitate Director NGMA Mumbai by presenting a floral bouquet. I would request Sri M. Sankar, Curator, NGMA, Mumbai, 
to felicitate Sri Arun Vadera from Vadera Art Gallery for their support in hosting this exhibition at NGMA Mumbai. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Director NGMA Mumbai for addressing the audience today. Respected Shri A. Ramachandran, senior artist whose work we've gathered here to celebrate. Shri Advait Charan Garnayak, DG, NGMA New Delhi. Shri R. Sivakumar, the curator of the show. Shri Arun Vadhira of the Vadhira Art Gallery. All artists, art lovers, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome all of you to NGMA for yet another delectable treat of hues. And I am indeed pleased to find my predecessor, Shri Khened, uh, here as well, who was also instrumental in getting this show approved. It was during his tenure that this actually was approved. And uh, we at NGMA have uh, striven to showcase the best artistic talent, both in India and abroad. And uh, it's as a part of this effort today that we have the privilege of hosting Shri A. Ramachandran's works. And it's fascinating how each artist has his own unique and signature style of shaping form and space. So we find yet another interpretation. And it's probably this uniqueness of Sri Ramachandran where you have the scale of uh, uh, visualization as well as presentation, which really is colossal to say the least. And it's a real visual treat. So I would also like to take uh, this opportunity to thank our DG, who's always here, to guide us. And uh, uh, there is the uh, Vadhira Art Gallery team also here, Sonia Madam and Satish Ji, who's actually done a lot of legwork for us. So, and uh, it's really beautiful uh, that we have this entire team, which has then helped us to put up such a colossal show, literally. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to request Director General NGMA for addressing the audience. Sabko pranam. The Ramachandran ji ka so actually me subeh se jab se aa raha hu, aise ghoom raha hu. Aur mere ko lagta hai, ye so dekhne ke liye sabko kam se kam saath baar aana padega. इतना बढ़िया सो और पेंटिंग देखने से जैसे होता है ना बाह अंदर से और अभी अरुण जी से बात कर रहा था मैंने चले एक आर्टिस्ट जब ड्राइंग बनाता है किस तरीके का वो उसका भी एक पार्ट आपको लगेगा कि वो ड्राइंग चल रहे हैं अभी मतलब इतना कैसे अंदर चल उनका आप देखेंगे क्योंकि उनका भी पोर्ट्रेट उसमें मिलेगा आपको थोड़ा कहाँ कहाँ एक्चुअली जिसने गणेश जी का रूप में ऐसे है ना एक ह्यूमन शरीर में एक हाथी का हेड लगा दिया था उस टाइम कैसे मतलब अभी जो उनका काम है आप देखेंगे इतना मतलब रूट से इतना डेप्थ में पहली बार देखा इतना काम एकाठी जो कि मेरे को लगता है कि हम हमारी आर्ट को प्रॉपर प्रेजेंट नहीं किए अभी टाइम हो गया कि हमको इसी लेवल में जाके देश विदेश में अभी मैं सोच रहा था कि ये सो दिल्ली में भी जाएगा मैंगलोर भी जाएगा क्योंकि जो अपना चीज होता है ना वो उसको कुछ बोलना नहीं पड़ता आप देख के लगता है ये मेरा है तो ये सारी चीज काम मैंने एक्चुअली शुरू से जब देख रहा था शिवदा से एक्चुअली शिवदा अभी बता रहे थे उनका बीस साल का रिलेशन फ्रेंडशिप अरुण जी शिवदा रामचंद्रन जी हाँ तो वो फ्रेंडशिप एक्चुअली साथ मिलके वो काम कर रहे हैं वो बैठने से उनका साथ आप सारी चीज़ फील कर सकते कितना डेथ में वो लोग सारे मिलके आप उनको लगता नहीं कि हम कर रहे हैं वो अपना आप हो रहे हैं जैसे लगा और इस तरह का आर्टिस्ट को मैं बार बार बोलता हूँ कि महारत ही देश में जो प्रेजेंट करना चाहिए हम कर नहीं पाए थे प्रॉपरली और होना चाहिए आ, सबसे बड़ी बात मेरे को लगा चमेली जी जो 
जिन्होंने ये सारी चीज को प्रॉपरली शायद करके रामचंद्र जी एक्चुअली शायद चैमिल जी का इतना कंट्रीब्यूशन है जो शांति निकेतन में जब रामचंद्र जी पढ़ाई किए तब से एक्चुअली एक केरला से एक आर्टिस्ट शांति निकेतन जाते हैं वो ट्रैवलिंग करता है और रास्ता एक जगह को बार बार जा रहे हैं आपको लगेगा कि मेडिटेशन जैसा एक जगह को बार बार कौन जा सकता वो फील कर हर बार जा रहे उनको अलग पत्ता का ड्राॅइंग आप देखेंगे लोटस का कोई एक सेम नहीं आपको लगेगा अलग अलग ड्रॉइंग से उसमें और कितना मेडिटेटिव वे में काम करो तो सारी चीज मिलता है और हमारी यंग जनरेशन एक्चुअल मैं चाहता हूँ ज़्यादातर कॉलेज का स्टूडेंट इस सारी चीज़ आके देखना चाहिए और जे जे का प्रिंसिपल भी यहाँ बैठे हैं डीन तो उनको भी मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूँगा कि आपका स्टूडेंट का साथ कुछ हो सकता है यहाँ क्योंकि बहुत जरूरी है हम जो चीज़ भूल चुके हैं ना हम अभी देखने से हमें बहुत गर्व भी फील करता हूँ कि नहीं भाई भारत का है शान हूँ जो कि प्रॉपरली हम बोल सकते बाहर में भी अभी हम बिनाले के लिए भी जा रहे हैं तो मैं यहाँ भी गांधी देखा गांधी कॉन्सेप्ट को लेके कर रहे हूँ गांधी कल्चर मेरे को इतना अच्छा लगा कि सोच भी नहीं सकते कि किसी लेवल में जाके एक एक आर्टिस्ट सोच सकता तो सारी बात आप देखेंगे और अच्छा भी आपको लगेगा और मैं चैमल जी को एक फूल का तोड़ा दे सकता हूँ अगर क्योंकि उन्हीं का कंट्रीब्यूशन मेरे को लगता है कि एक आर्टिस्ट को किस तरह का वो संभाल के रखें और कहाँ तक पहुँचाए रामचंद्र जी अगर यहाँ पर पहुँचे तो चैमल जी का वजह से मैं सोचता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू सर I would like to invite Sri A. Ramachandran to share his views and artistic journey with us. I'm um, spellbound by the kind of reception I am getting at this age. The journey was quite difficult, but somehow I managed. We both managed all these years, you know, consistently trying to do best, best possible way to contribute to this country culture. I need not speak because I am very sure my words can speak better. I can only request you look at them, give them time. They will start speaking to you. I have spent all my life searching for a clarity of thought and communication. I don't know what I got. but i'm thankful to all of you to give me this reception thank you thank you sir i would like to invite sri arun vadera to come on stage and address the audience good evening all of you many thanks for coming you got a distinguished dais and a distinguished audience 
and I am no art critic, I am no art historian. Well, uh, Mr. Shivakumar will uh, do the needful in that direction. But uh, I'd like to really, really thank Mr. Ramachandran to have given us the support he has given us for the last 20 years, along with Chumeli Ji. And both of them have really supported our gallery. For which I am really, very proud of the fact that they trusted us for so many years. Thank you so much, Ganayati, for having this show, and Anitaji for having this show. It's 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 a emotional moment for me to have a show like this. It's. What attracts me to Ramachandran's work is his facility with the line, his handling of the color. There's no doubt that he is the best colorist I have known, or even may. I don't think anybody in the world is a better colorist than him. But I've seen him work, I've seen him explain me what colors I have gone into this particular color and the kind of effort he puts in is enormous. Last but not the least, I would like to thank Sonia Balani, uh, who is a co-director uh, and also uh, one of the promoting directors of the gallery, one of the founder directors of the gallery. Thank you, Sonia. I'd like to thank Manisha for all the energy and the warmth she brings along with her and all the help she extends is enormous, is really enormous. I'd like to thank Satish, Pradeep, Prakash for without their efforts this show wouldn't have happened. Well, thank you very much and all the very best. As I said, this is quite an emotional moment for me, so I'm really falling short of words. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to invite Sri Arsiv Kumar, an eminent art historian, art critic, and curator, whose major research has been in the area of early Indian modernism with a special focus on the Shanti Niketan school. He is kindly requested to share his experience as a curator of this show by presenting a short documentary film also. Would like to oblige, would like to apology, uh, apologize the audience and apologize to Mr. Shivakumar that I didn't name him because without him this show couldn't have happened and he's such a dear friend. I My apologies to you on this. Thank you. Okay, friends. Um, I'm here because I have been, I have, was invited by uh, Ramachandran and the Vadaila Gallery to curate this exhibition for NGMA and obviously it was a great honor and it was a great pleasure working with both of them and it was also a renewal of old friendships as uh, um, the Director General just mentioned, actually much older than 20 years. Um, it started while I was a student at Shantini Gedan, and um, I am thankful to Ramachandran for I mean, allowing me to have this um, 
close relationship with him and also allowing me to deal with his works for a long time and obviously also with the Vadera Gallery and especially Arun Vadera for uh, giving me this opportunity I mean repeatedly to do work in collaboration with them and it was a great pleasure to do work with them and um, NGMA also is an old friend I have been lucky that I have been asked by the National Gallery both in Delhi and here to collaborate with them on a number of occasions so this is I suppose a continuation of a old project in many ways. Um, Ramachandran's works are downstairs, so what I'm going to show is just a prelude. It doesn't uh, take away from your encounter with the works. Again, as the Director General was just telling, it uh, adds to your experience and the more you see, the more you draw from it. But maybe we couldn't bring everything that we would have liked to bring here. It's just simply not impossible to do that. I mean, even this great space of NGMA, you will see is, I mean, packed with works and yet a great deal and many, many aspects of his work is left out. So this is a sh very short prelude and to his works in general. One of the first things that happened when he traveled from Kerala to Calcutta and which haunted him for a long time was his encounter with uh, post-partition suffering and dehumanization that he saw on the streets of Calcutta. And he tried to capture his experience by creating an image of man in the model of Christ. When he moved to Delhi a few years later, this vision continued to haunt him and he saw vestiges of such a recent history even where he lived. And that led to an, an important body of works in the early phase. But when he looked for a model for expressing this experience, he didn't turn to the mainstream of modern European art. Especially, we would have expected him to turn to something like expressionism. He didn't do that. I suppose he would have found it too autobiographical. And Instead, his uh, kind of inspiration came from Dostoevsky, who captured human despair, I mean, with an impersonal kind of passion. And also in the Mexican muralist, who could bypass the mainstream European, modern European art, and draw inspiration from Baroque, uh, the kind of energy and the theatricality of the Baroque. And you can already see in a painting like this, um, and this is one of the most representative works of this period, we see a mixture of despair, suffering, death, and a kind of struggle alongside. And one also notices that his mode of working, I mean, is more like that of a muralist, and he uses a kind of lateral expansion, and that is done in terms of multiplying 
a given format. And you will see this probably running right into his more recent work. Now, this series of work in the early 60s went on till this is late eight, 60s and then culminated in a group of work based on the Bible or biblical themes. Now, in, in these, his image of Christ appears not as the omnipresent God that we normally see uh, in the Christian tradition of painting, but uh, who works according to a given divine plan, but as a conflicted, suffering human, much like the figure of Christ in Dostoevsky's writing. And the paintings kind of were followed by a group of etchings, some of which are here in this gallery. And um, we see this even more so in the etchings. And probably in an etching like this, which uh, shows the kind of agony in the gardens. I mean, I think there is no other painting which shows a more tortured Christ. Remember all the Renaissance paintings of agony in the garden that we know of. I mean, they all look so docile with this. I mean, a Christ suffering and conflicted we would not have seen anywhere else. Now, Towards the end of the 60s, we see um, his vision slightly shifting on to a contemplation on the 20th century. And the 20th century is not only really a period of great violence, but also a period in which we have been perfecting missions of destruction. Missions of destructing others, missions for destructing ourselves, and or what we may call ideologies of annihilation. And it is this point that he also begins to develop his involvement with Gandhi, in a sense. And this is the work he did for the Gandhi Darshan in Delhi. And gradually we see this uh, moving towards the figures who were involved in perfecting this uh, cult of violence and uh, destruction. And moving on, in a sense, his paintings become a little more than protest, a kind of political satire. And he also uses, as you have noticed, the biblical stories or maybe I mean, imageries from our ancient literature. And he discovers these motifs of, I mean, self-destruction across history. Now, that suffering really is replaced by irony and a kind of dark humor by the mid-70s. And probably inspired by people like, I mean, Mantho. And uh, this is a series of works he did based on Mantho's stories. We have three of them downstairs. He did a whole series of them. And uh, Anwar Sajat's, I mean, uh, Kushon Ki Bag, I mean, the novel. And uh, which inspired him to do a series of political satire called the Puppet Theatre. And that carried on to his other work. So you see that there was this transition from this suffering image of man towards a kind of anger which then takes on the form of political protest, irony, and a sense of absurdity underlying all our human efforts. The beginning of the 80s was, I mean, a slightly, I mean, different period for Ramachandran. I mean, it started with a small scare, 
I mean, he for a moment had a feeling that, I mean, because he had a little eye trouble and which he had the scare of losing his eyesight at an early age. So that made him a little introspective. Now we see a kind of prelude to this thought in his Yayadi in 83. Of course, this first version of Yayadi stands between his early work and the one we will, uh, which he did to follow. The work, the large mural size, about 60 feet, this is just one third of that mural, called uh, Yayadi, which he did over two years, 84, 86, is what followed this personal health issue. And um, it's a very complex work. It has several layers to it. As I said, there is this personal level, the, the scare of losing eyesight at the age of 48. I mean, that led him to think about the myth of Yayadi in the Mahabharata and Yayadi's desire for eternal youth. Now, at a second level, it also led to a myth, moral or allegorical underplay in this whole thing, that such a desire is absurd and not within the scope of human possibilities. And there is also, we might say, a third layer to it, the aspect of language. Now here he was making a, a deliberate attempt to resurrect narration using a visual language that had its roots in the ancient Indian antecedents. So in a sense, it was much more than a personal response to a personal experience. And it was contemplated. In fact, this is one of the first, it was somewhere around this time that we, I had a very long discussion. He ex was talking about this project and where I began to get involved in his work. And Yeyadi, I mean, in fact, was displayed with these three large segments, I mean, making a kind of, I mean, dividing up a space and at the center of which there were a group of small sculptures and more like a temple dedicated to human vulnerability. Now, there were several changes that happened at this time and with the Ayati. One of the things that really shook him while painting the Ayati was the 1984 Sikh killings in Delhi. This shook his faith in the progressive possibilities of modernity to which, like many others in his generation, he was totally committed. And it also shook his confidence about the ability of art to change the world. When he saw those violins right in front of his eyes, he thought that his own earlier efforts to shock the world into sense was absolutely futile. If anything, the opposite happened. The violence of the world shook him into sense that, I mean, talking about this violence, devoting an art to the kind of trying to shake people into sense through violence was not his way. And with this, he actually turned his back on the kind of modernity that he himself was proposing in his work. And he embraced almost everything that was the opposite of his own early work. And he was helped in this by his visits to the bill villages around Udaipur, which he had started doing a little earlier. 
and this comes out more in a series of paintings where he uses the mythical story of I mean Urvashi and Pururavas and um, he becomes Pururavas who is in pursuit of this mythical beauty and as you have seen in these three paintings he kind of presents him not as the modern man but in a sense a subhuman now because if modern man has been able to do all that violence to each other to kill each other then of course he can only be represented as subhuman perhaps he also began to see during this time that the artist as somebody who represents what he sees and also creates a parallel world now this is something that an idea that he explores all through his work and you will see many of them in this exhibition now he builds upon these experiences and the people he sees around in these villages and then tries to create myths of his own so far he was trying to i mean project these visual experiences onto older myths but now he builds new myths on the basis of what he is trying to see now as he goes to these villages repeatedly he also begins to see the possibility of an alternate approach to living at the alternate approach to life and guided by a different set of values so he begins by representing them looking at their myths their stories their i mean the various collective aspects of their life like young women on a, going to a fair where they would all find their own grooms or maybe other kind of rituals and so on gradually as he represents this a certain vision of alternative i mean takes shape and some of them take on an iconic characteristics and there are a number of these fabulous paintings he did where i mean both him sometimes alternates with real characters and gives you a sense of this iconic presence of life itself okay and some you can see here about the same time he started doing smaller works uh almost slightly largish miniatures you can say where he tries to dream a kind of narration up based on those little things so they are as if they are characters the trees the animals the people and he begins to dream a kind of life around them and these miniatures are oh, slightly largish miniatures and udaipur has these miniatures of around 2 and 1/2 3 feet size and so uh, that was one of the things i mean he was already looking into a lot of miniatures especially because he worked with the kumar gallery who also had a parallel trade in miniatures so he was very familiar with them and he was looking at them and in udaipur of course he saw this slightly larger format of miniatures and he adopts these similar format for this series of work and so this is almost dream dreaming up a story around a place in the way i mean i mean arke narayanan does it kind of um, stories of malgudi in a sense and the artist as the creator dreamer is part of that after having done these i mean many of these characters and begin to emerge in his sculptures i mean he had done a series of sculptures in the early 70s then sort of left it but now he comes back to them 
and they are the sculptural equivalents of those um, iconic paintings that he did. Okay. Some of them can be very elaborate, like this one which we have here. It's a complex meditation on the artist as the creator and as the center of his I mean, work. So uh, this becomes a new dimension in his I mean, creative output, I mean, post 90s. Now, I would end by showing you a series of paintings which I think doesn't need a commentary. One of the other things that he noticed there when he went was nature. And nature um, comes in various ways. And one motif that runs through his work for quite a long time now, almost 30 years, is the lotus pond. And these villages, all of them had these enormous lotus ponds. And his visits to these places about three or four times a year led him to notice these ponds in all kinds of situations. I mean, in the summer, I mean, in light, in the daylight, at night, maybe uh, at dusk, on a bright morning, on a cloudy day, and so on. And obviously it reminded him, it m made him take an interest. If you are familiar with this children's book, he had already used a motif like this, borrowed from um, Elora. And um, you can see not only his interest in the way this has been treated in Indian sculptural reliefs and miniature paintings, but also across Asia, like in, especially in Japan and Korea and so on. So these paintings, which are almost like those screens and about daytime and moonlight, or maybe he works with various notions because Indian painters and the Asian painters at large, they when they looked at nature, they studied it, but they also were conscious about transcribing it in terms of a visual language. And when you transcribe it in terms of a visual language, then there is a shift that takes place and the images take on a life of their own which language demands. And this is something that he does by just shifting three different colors. So he uses the trilogy of colors and how does the, I mean, the kind of same motif look so different. And this is an exploration I had, which has not ended, which is continuing. And if one could assemble all these lotus pawns, I mean, we would perhaps see that there is no, not a repetition as, I mean, uh, we heard, but we'll see that it's a world of its own. And this he mentioned to me once, like he entered these lotus ponds, not just looking at them from outside. And when you enter them, you realize that it has a different climatics. So it is not the dry air and cool air of Udaipur, but it's humid inside there. And therefore it sustains a different ecosystem. And it has its own moment of blooming. And it has its own moment of death. And his paintings reflect upon this aspects of the world outside us, but which sustains us in many ways. And if one carefully looks through his works of the last 30 years or so, it is this growing sense of that alternate reality out there, which we seem to be moving away from, that is more attractive to Ramachandran. Thank you.
Francisco. Actually, उनके लिए बहुत बड़ा ताली होना चाहिए कि सिब्दा जी से सबसे अभी तो देख रहे हैं लेकिन जिस हिसाब से वो डिस्प्ले किए इतना क्लीन इतना परफेक्ट मैं सोचा नहीं था तो और एक बार ताली हो जाए बिग हंड पर शिवदा थैंक यू सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट श्री एम शंकर टू कम ऑन स्टेज फॉर बोट ऑफ थैंक्स Thank you, Shruti. On a behalf of uh, National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai, and Delhi, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, I would like to thank you for this very special occasion of A. Ram Chandran's 50 years of art practices. I congratulate uh, Nair Sab, Professor Nair Sab. Everybody forgot him. <laughs> He is known as a Professor Nair in all India. And uh, I would also congratulate Chameli Madam for all his support for making him. the great artist and i would also like to thank you professor shiv kumar for his all great intellectual support and he has been associated with the national gallery of modern art especially for all related programs with shantini ketan and he has been here for many times and uh, he had also curated many great retrospective exhibitions in delhi and uh, mumbai especially shantini ketan rapkin karve tagur and bibi mukherji now hey ramchandar this is the second exhibition one is retrospective held in delhi but this is not a retrospective but it's a 50 years but retrospective has contained great works of his student time also i was personally involved in making that exhibition and all and also like to thank you mr arun varela ji uh, always he was associated with us for supporting all great art exhibitions for coming to ngma and he has also great generous and he had supported a great work of hey ramchandran ji collected and gifted to national gallery of modern art i remember personally it was a great sculpture uh, thank you sonia balani ji for all his all all her support for always associating with the uh, wadera national gallery of modern art in fact for a uh, art scene in india i would like to thank you director general mr gadnayak he came all over the uh, uh, from uh, delhi to mumbai for making this evening is a great exhibition successful i would like to thank you for uh, all great audience here eminent people in the uh, audience and your presence has made this exhibition is possible thank you very much for one and all and uh, i would like to thank you for people who are supported technically displaying this from the back side of the theater and front this one and i would like to thank you ngm staff outside staff and media and all great people supporting this exhibition i would request you all for a word of mouth please spread this exhibition to see people around the city and country and i would like to thank you once again for everyone to join for the cup of tea last but least please enjoy the show good night thank you very much thank you